Welcome everyone to the Malaria Partners International webinar series and today's event, Rotary's first program of scale, Partners for a Malaria-Free Zambia. Well, thank you again for joining us. My name is Ariel Delaney. I'm the Deputy Director with Malaria Partners International. Our moderator for today's event is gonna be Jenny Andrews. Jenny Andrews is the Executive Director of Malaria Partners International. Uh, she is a 25 year member of the Rotary Club of Bellevue Breakfast, who's been actively involved in international service since her first trip to Ethiopia and Uganda uh, to vaccinate children against polio. And prior to joining Malaria Partners International, uh, Jenny served as the Director of Global Engagement at PATH, driving healthcare innovation and to improve health and well being of women and children in more than 70 countries around the world. I'll hand over to Jenny. Thank you, Ariel. I appreciate that introduction. Good day, and thank you all for joining us for this very special webinar. My name, again, is Jenny Andrews, and I am privileged to serve as the Executive Director of Malaria Partners International. Today, we have Rotarians and guests joining us from many countries around the world, and on behalf of Malaria Partners International, I welcome you all. On March 9th, Rotary International uh, announced the launch of its first program of scale grant, Partners for a Malaria-Free Zambia, a $6 million collaboration among Rotary, World Vision, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to train, equip, and deploy community health workers in Zambia. This program will scale up the already successful malaria elimination work of the Rotary Club of Federal Way, working in Zambia's Copper Belt province, and it will help reduce malaria by 90% in two additional Zambian provinces. Malaria is considered the greatest killer of all times. In 2019 alone, the world experienced 229 million cases of malaria and over 409,000 people, mostly young children and pregnant women, died of this preventable and treatable disease. 94% of those cases and deaths were in Sub-Saharan Africa, where our work takes place. Malaria Partners International is a nonprofit organization founded and run by Rotarians. We are working to ignite an international campaign among Rotarians for the global elimination of malaria. We advocate through, for support of ending malaria through presentations at Rotary clubs and district conferences throughout the US and Africa. If you are interested in having one of our board members speak to your club, please put that request in the chat or look, go to our website and ask for a presentation. In addition, we provide funding through our small grants program to Rotary clubs around the world that want to get involved in the fight to end malaria. In Rotary's first programs of scale, Malaria Partners International worked closely with all of the partners, including Rotary International, the Rotary Club of Federal Way, World Vision, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and others to assess the need, convene the partners, submit the application, and prepare for Rotary's rigorous vetting process. With Partners for a Malaria-Free Zambia launching its first training this coming week, we continue to work closely with all partners to ensure the success of the work. Today, we'll hear from four key players in Rotary's first Programs of Scale Award. Victor Barnes will share the goals and desired impact of Rotary's Program of Scale. Sarah Crawford will discuss the key criteria Rotary looks for in Programs of Scale applications. Bill Felt will share the journey of planning and now executing Partners for a Malaria-Free Zambia. And Martha Lungu will highlight how her team created a successful needs assessment and in-country partnerships to foster mobilization. And now I'm pleased to share a little background information on each panelist. Victor Barnes joined Rotary in 2013 as the Director of Programs and Grants and now oversees the Rotary Foundation's district and global grant making. He's also responsible for Rotary Youth Programs, Service and Project Partnerships, member engagement, fellowship, and action groups, and programs of scale. 
Prior to joining Rotary, Victor held senior leadership roles at AIDS United, the Corporate Council on Africa, the Centers for Disease Control, and USAID. Victor received his BA at Washington and Lee University and his MA from the University of California. He completed his PhD coursework at Stanford University's International Development Education Center. Victor is an admirer of contemporary African art, and decades from now, when he's ready for retirement, Victor <laughs> plans to promote African American artists. <laughs> Sarah Crawford joined Rotary, the Rotary team in July of 2020 and oversees programs of scale. Previously, Sarah spent 10 years working with the Millennium Challenge Corporation, initially overseeing private sector development programs in several countries in Central America, Africa, and Asia, and then serving as the, at the U.S. Embassy in El Salvador as the Deputy Resident Country Director, and in Washington, D.C. as the Director of Strategic Partnerships. Sarah holds a BA in Political Science from the University of Illinois and an MA in International Service from American University. Sarah comes by her Rotary roots naturally, as both of her parents are Rotarians, and Sarah was a Rotary Ambassadorial Scholar in Brazil. Bill Felt has been a Rotarian for 33 years, the last 22 of which have been with the Rotary Club of Federal Way. He has served as the primary international sponsor on nine Rotary grants, including four in Zambia, three in Bolivia, and one each in Namibia and Nicaragua. Bill currently is the lead Rotarian in Rotary's first programs of scale, Partners for Malaria Free Zambia. Bill graduated from Carleton College, where he served for 16 years on its Board of Trustees and also served as the president of Carleton's Alumni Association. Bill received his MBA from Harvard University and served with the United States Foreign Service with postings in Germany, Iran, and the State Department in Washington, DC. Over the last 33 years, when not fully engaged in Rotary projects, Bill also found time to serve in executive positions with Warehouser Company and was a majority owner and CEO of Floor Metal Fabricators. And finally, Martha Lungu is the executive director of Malaria Partners Zambia. She is a past assistant governor for District 9210 and a member of the Rotary Club of Ndola. Martha has been a Rotarian for over 15 years. She is a chartered accountant and serves on the Rotary Foundation's cadre of technical advisors in auditing. And now it is my pleasure to call on Victor Barnes who will share Rotary's vision for the programs of scale. Over to you, Victor. Thank you, Jenny. Um, so what I'd like to do is give you a very brief history of of programs of scale and sort of where they came from the genesis of, of the program, because I think it's important to sort of ground it in the history of the organization. And there are two fundamental things that have really influenced the development of programs of scale. The first uh, was the development of future vision and global grants over the past 10 to 12 years and the revision of how Rotary did its international grant making. Um, we moved from a very sort of free reeling way of, of distributing nearly $100 million a year to one in which we um, initiated a series of six areas of focus, soon to be seven, that provided criteria and structure for Rotarians on how they spent what uh, nearly $150 million a year in both global and district grants. And the intent was really to not only focus the work that Rotarians were doing, but to provide uh, sustainability in the work that they were doing to, to use community assessments to not only understand the assets and the deficits of the communities they were working in, but also to create real buy-in into those communities so that there was sustainability in the work that was happening. And ultimately the intent 
is to begin to, to see um, measurement and outcome indicators and ultimately impact indicators um, in this very large um, investment that Rotary makes on an annual basis. So that, that really set the stage for looking at a, at a more intense way of doing um, uh, grant making, which ultimately resulted in programs of scale. The other critical area that really drove um, the discussion to look for an alternative grant model is really the pending eradication of polio. Um, and as many of you may know, polio is Rotary's largest corporate um, investment in, in grant making, um, and it, it's about $150 million a year. It represents a very consolidated effort on the part of Rotarians to eradicate a disease. The, the assumption is that within a relatively short period of time, that eradication will actually take place. And in order for Rotary to, to be prepared um, in the future and to give direction um, for, for the foundation in the future, we really needed to begin to think about, well, what does it look like post polio? What is the kind of work that Rotary can do that would replicate um, the success that we've seen in, in programs of scale? So the vision for programs of scale is really to provide Rotarians with the opportunity to do large scale, high impact work that attracts not only other implementing partners, but attracts um, uh, resource partners as well. So that we are beginning to look at how we take what we did in Rotary um, polio activities and replicate that um, in, in other areas and, and create an opportunity for Rotary to actually have a product that it can say it, it, that it owns and, and can um, provide future direction for the foundation. And I think the other critical piece of, of programs of scale is to provide learnings to the rest of the organization around what it is to have a high impact project and, and how that begins to influence the work that Rotarians are doing internationally. Just a really brief history of, of, of how we got to where we are. Um, there, were, there have been many discussions ongoing for the past um, seven or eight years with senior leadership and external and internal consultants about what Rotary should be doing in the future and what is the future direction of the foundation. How, what does that look like? How do you engage Rotarians? What interests Rotarians? What's driving Rotarians? And the trustees really asked, um, as a result of a, a grant model evaluation, asked the general secretary to look at what are the options for moving um, our program forward. Um, the secretariat um, came back, the staff of the secretary came back, um, in 2018 with a proposal for programs of scale, which really tried to address all of the needs of, of the future of the organization in terms of a consolidated focus, a product that would attract both implementing organizations and resourcing organizations, and something that Rotary could claim as, as um, an area of expertise that would then be replicable throughout um, many regions of, of, of the world that Rotary continues to invest in. Um, ultimately, um, we, we launched programs of scale and we'll talk more about that whole process, but we, we were thrilled with partners from uh, Malaria-Free Zambia because they represented every element of that sort of um, ideal um, relationship. It was a program that was highly focused it was a program that was led by Rotarians. It was a program that was able to garner both implementation partners and resource partners. And it really reflected everything that we wanted um, in, in a program of scale. So just in, in summary, and then before I pass it on to my colleague, Sarah, to talk more about, excuse me, the actual process of programs of scale, I just wanted to sort of outline um, sort of the essence of programs of scale. So we're, we're looking at a longer term investment. Typically a global grant is a 12 month investment. So we're looking at more of a three to five year investment. 
it needs to be evidence-based. It needs to be a proven concept um, and, and one in which um, we can look at the evidence to see that it's been an effective intervention. It needs to be locally relevant and, and represent not only the needs of the community, but also be invested in the community, both institutionally as, as well as within the population of those, uh, of those communities. Um, equally important, it needs to be ready to scale. And for, for Rotary Scale, it has a number of different meanings. It can be geographic, it can be population size, but ultimately it needs to be a program that we can take from one community and move to another community and show success across, across those communities. Um, theory of change and the linkage between theory of change and the actual elements of the program um, need to be the guiding force of, of programs of scale. And most important, it needs to be seen as a program that uses the, the unique strengths of Rotary and, and is a Rotary-led program so that in the future of the foundation, we can say that here are the areas or area in which Rotary feels it can excel and wants to support at, at a very large scale um, this kind of investment. I think that we really struck gold with, with um, our first winner. And, and I think they, you represent everything that we're looking for in a program of scale. And so with that, I'll let Sarah talk in more detail about what that looks like. Great, thank you. So I'm going to give a brief overview of what happened during the first round of competition, how we got to today. So Programs of Scale was a two-step competition. We requested proposals. And that request came right before the pandemic hit, um, but we were able to proceed as, as uh, we were able and moved to still award the first programs of scale in December of 2020. Uh, but it shows the resilience both of the teams and the foundation to come together and stay steadfast in their vision and mission uh, to eradicate, uh, eliminate malaria. Uh, so we went from 70 initial proposals and narrowed them down to a top five. See, we had full proposals from the following. And I wanted to share this with you all because you can actually see how competitive uh, the, the process was and that each area of focus presented an ex enormously strong uh, proposal, Rotarian led with strong program partners, each brought strong co-funding sources. So again, it's, it's a testament both to Rotarians and their action around the world, as well as to this team as being the first awardee. The three main areas that we looked at across all of those final award applications uh, were readiness to scale. As Victor said, it, we're looking to scale, we're looking for both sustainable programs and programs that have opportunities for future scale. We're looking to learn together, not just ask for data for data's sake, not just ask you to track and put numbers into a system, but that we can learn together of what's working on the ground. You can share that with members and others around the world who care about the same cause, and that you can help the Rotary Foundation understand what is working for Rotarians and scaling so we can prepare for the next future of Rotary. And finally, and most importantly, is that it, it represents Rotary, both through the good stewardship and trust built in communities and strong financial management, but also the people of action uh, theme needs to play out that there are Rotarians mobilizing for community action and at the highest levels to uh, advocate for the change that's needed. We were able to, we were not able to do advanced site visits because of travel restrictions, but we were able to do very comprehensive and the team can talk about how comprehensive the review was with the Rotary teams, the implementing partners, the co-funders, community members on the ground, the institutions that would be part of the implementation and sustainability plans. And here are some of the quotes that we gathered through the process. Again, these quotes were across the board for any of the applicants, 
but I think it really speaks again to that testament of represents Rotary well. So again, and finally, the key factors that allowed this program to rise to the top uh, and make a clear decision for the trustees in the first award was that they did employ a systems approach. They really looked at where Rotarians can add value, where implementing partners need to come in and the right institutions to um, be working in concert with to make uh, malaria elimination in these two provinces a reality. They have a strong monitoring, evaluation, and learning system, and a curiosity for what is working and a willingness to share what's working and not working with everyone. They have um, wonderfully strong Rotarians uh, that you are probably really waiting to hear from. And, and so I'll move on, but uh, what's next? We are looking forward to launching the second Programs of Scale competition in June of this year, but continuing to share from now and moving forward what we are learning on the ground from partners from Malaria Free Zambia, as well as future awardees. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And um, hearing you, discuss the programs of scale process certainly brings back vivid memories of collaborating with our partners to create that uh, compelling application. And no one was more engaged in that process than our next speaker, Bill Felt, who led this process for the Rotary Club of Federal Way in Washington State. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Bill. Uh, thank you, Jenny, and thank you, Victor and Sarah. Really. Everything we have done begins with the leadership that Rotary International has shown with regard to the eradication of polio. Uh, recognition comes with that, and Martha can nod her head with this. Uh, credibility, it was a real door opener. And uh, looking at the pictures here, down under the two, 2009, you see Bill Gates Sr. with Rotary Club of Seattle's uh, president at the time in 2009, that was Nancy Osborne, and she asked Bill Gates Sr., he was head of the foundation at the time, what international project should we do for our centennial project? And Bill Gates Sr. said, malaria and Zambia. And uh, with that, uh, Nancy and some other Rotarians traveled to uh, Zambia in 2009 and we've established a highly productive and uh, wonderful wonderful friendships and uh, quite a long-term relationship with the Zambian Rotarians, including, of course, Martha. And we have been meeting ever since then with uh, the National Malaria Elimination Center and PATHMASEPA, a global uh, health organization based in Seattle. You will see a picture uh, below and to the right of Bill Gates Sr. and Nancy. Uh, and I am the individual with this little hand, a little, little uh, child. And this is, this is really why we are all so committed because it is children who are the ones who are the most impacted uh, by, this, uh, by this dreaded uh, disease, malaria. The person behind me in that picture is Dr. Mwangala Muyendekwa of the Rotary Club of Kalalushi. And uh, after we did a, a small bed net distribution project, and we are ex actually examining the bed, net, uh, bed nets in, in the various huts around Kalalushi, uh, he said, we've got to scale up. This, you know, this is a great project, but we've got to do more. And having already worked with World Vision on a project in Ghana, we approached them and they agreed. And we, so we went ahead with a much larger scale project not 6,500 nets, but 146,000 nets, uh, positively impacting uh, 217,000 people in two districts of uh, Zambia. So that was our first effort to scale up. And um, since then, uh, you know, we have we have created formal organizations, as Jenny said, Malaria Partners Zambia, Malaria Partners International. The next key event really is the uncovering of the opportunity for community health workers, which the government of Zambia was already scaling up uh, in uh, 2012, 2013. And so we had a very seminal meeting, Zambian Rotarians, Seattle Rotarians, the National Malaria Elimination Center, PATH Masepa, 
World Vision Zambia and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation all met in October in Lusaka, Zambia. We decided that let's let's go for training of, of community health workers and let's let's uh, let's try to really uh, build up the momentum for this because this is the providing last kilometer uh, healthcare for the citizens of Zambia. So it's an intensive uh, training course that these volunteer community health workers. Uh, participate in, gives them training in now and in, in training, of course, in COVID uh, protection, but also obviously malaria and then uh, diarrhea as well as uh, pneumonia, which are often comorbidities uh, with regard to malaria. The proof of concept is a near elimination, elimination in uh, the Southern province. And we take that as our goal, our, our North Star that we're, that we're fighting for. And we've already done or are in the process of doing three large projects to train uh, over 1,500 community health workers uh, on the Copper Belt. And Martha has had a, inter played an integral part in, uh, in those uh, activities. Uh, in anticipation of, of uh, Rotary's uh, program of scale announcement, and we, Victor, we did have, there were rumors. <laughs> and so uh, in the fall of, uh, 2019, before the announcement, World Vision and the Gates Foundation actually approached Malaria Partners International and said, we would like to partner with you on this. And to us, that, uh, that was just uh, obviously a, a real terrific uh, situation. And uh, once again, I, I will say, reemphasize that polio gave us credibility because it Rotary can be so successful in polio, Rotary can be successful in other major projects. So we are partnering with them. Uh, we and World Vision are co-implementing partners. Each partner is contributing $2 million. And we hope this is a future model, not only in Zambia, but in other countries in, uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa. And following the, uh, the formal announcement, of course, we, uh, we got to work on our proposal and application. We got great support from, uh, we had a core team of, of uh, Seattle-based Rotarians and others, uh, Long Beach, uh, Tacoma. Uh, we had great support from World Vision and a lot of advice and counsel from the Gates Foundation, which has been active with, in assisting the training of community health workers in Zambia since 2013. And then post-award, um, it's been intensive. Uh, we have invited Sarah to join us in many of our meetings, and she can attest the fact that uh, we've gone through a lot of issues and uh, finalizing the work plan, the budget, performance measures. Uh, our, the Zambian Rotarians and the uh, World Vision Zambia folks have been just terrific, as have our partners in Zambia, the National Malaria Elimination Center and uh, Path Masepa. So we are moving ahead, and in uh, as Jenny said, in uh, on May third, uh, we begin our first uh, four training sessions. So by uh, May sixteenth, we'll be able to train two hundred and forty community health workers out of the twenty five hundred we plan for. After they're seconded to uh, their local health center, uh, by July first, we will have protection in the field for 120,000 Zambians, working our way toward 1.3 million. As far as governance is concerned, the Rotary Club of Federal Way is, uh, is the program lead with Rural Vision Zambia providing financial and uh, uh, administrative, including procurement leadership. Myself, I will be the uh, chair, I am chair of the program steering committee. Martha Lungu and uh, World Vision Zambia and Millipart Malaria Partners Zambia is chair of the program management committee, and that that is really the operating committee, uh, so handling all the day-to-day -day activities. And uh, so we are in the leadership position in both uh, at both levels, a board of directors, if you will, and at at, at the operating level, uh, the implementing level. It's time to turn it over to uh, our great uh, Martha Lungu, a wonderful Rotarian. Uh, Actually, Bill, if you don't mind, I'm going to hop in here real quickly and thank you so much for your comments. For those of you who don't know Bill, I just want to tell you that Bill is my service above self hero. He has really um, done an amazing work uh, around the world to make the world a better place through Rotary. So thank you for that, Bill. 
And our final speaker today is joining us from Mpika, Zambia, where the first community health worker training begins on this, this coming week. So we're very fortunate now to hear from my colleague and friend, Martha Lungu, who is leading our boots on the ground work in Zambia. Martha. Uh, thank you very much, Jenny. And um, it's good evening here, everyone. Welcome to Zambia. Welcome to Muchinga province and in Pika to be specific. Well, um, malaria is a person of almost uh, all Zambians because uh, if you're not infected with the disease, you must know someone that is. And uh, having had malaria several times myself, I know how terrible it feels to have it and it affects you negatively. Uh, this is why Zambian Rotarians have been actively involved for over a decade now to help eliminate malaria using several interventions. Malaria Partner Zambia has come on board and partnered with several Rotary clubs in the fight against malaria, forming strong collaborations with the National Malaria Elimination Center, Ministry of Health, USAID, that is the President Malaria Initiative, uh, PAMO, the End Malaria Council, where we have a seat, and um, Churches uh, Health Association of Zambia, that is CHAS, um, uh, traditional leaders and faith-based leaders. So how we responded to the program of scale opportunity was that uh, we, um, working hand in hand with um, uh, World Vision, uh, consulted uh, with um, uh, National Malaria Elimination Center to um, identify uh, target provinces and districts. And when these were identified, we made sure to go to all the two districts as well as the 10, um, the two provinces as well as the two, 10 districts of um, Chinga and Central Province. So the 10 uh, uh, districts are six in Central Province, and namely Luano, uh, Chisamba, Chibombo, Kabwe, uh, Mukushi, and Serenje. Then we have uh, four districts in Muchinga province, which is uh, Kanchibia, Labushimanda, um, Ampika, as well as um, um, Shuangandu. So we conducted uh, the uh, stakeholder assessment in uh, all these uh, 10 districts and consulted with um, the community, the faith leaders, the traditional leadership. And uh, once this was done, we came up with um, the budget as well as the logical framework. A Malaria Partner Zambia, after um, the grant was uh, awarded, continued working hand in hand with World Vision. And uh, we went back to National Malaria Elimination Center to confirm the project scope and timing. As you may be aware, a lot of things have since changed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Initially, a class uh, was uh, supposed to have um, 40 people, but now because of the COVID-19, we are restricted to only 30. And this has really affected the budget and the other thing that affected the budget was the culture depreciation, which uh, gave rise to almost all essential commodities. We then had to revise the work plan and budget. We called for a startup workshop for partners, and a lot of issues were tabled, including the roles and responsibilities, uh, training schedules, the budget, and the project activities. We have since mobilized all the six Rotary clubs participating in the project. I can confirm that uh, we will have Rotarians attending all trainings and will lead community meetings to create awareness and malaria prevention uh, activities. Uh, Rotarians will be present at all system strengthening activities, working hand in hand with the National Malaria Elimination Center, the provincial and district health officials. So um, 
partners for malaria free zambia after um, having had um, the community health workers trained equipped and deployed we want to uh, we want or we hope to achieve the following uh, first of all we seek to dramatically reduce malaria incidence deaths and uh, severe cases because we know that it's because of these severe cases that lead to death and the, the cases become severe when the treatment is delayed. So taking the um, treatment close to the, to the community, I think is one intervention that will achieve a great results. And also through the deployment of community health workers will shift malaria detection and treatment to the communities, freeing up health uh, centers for other health priorities. We will raise Rotary's national profile. We, will, we, we hope to create opportunities for other national or provincial collaborations, not just with Rotary, but other organizations. We, we expect to have a highly motivated cadre of Zambian Rotarians, and in turn, this will lead or attract new membership because it's because of these uh, uh, great projects that will attract members to join Rotary. I thank you. Martha, thank you so much. I know that I speak for everyone involved in this program of scale when I say that we could not have a better on the ground partner than you. So we appreciate that. I recognize that this has been a whirlwind of information and I'd like at this point to open it up for questions for our panelists. Thank you, Jenny. We have quite a few questions. Uh, we're gonna try and get through as many as possible. Uh, but I want to start with this one. Uh, how will the news of coming out of Burkina Faso about the eff efficacy of a new malaria vaccine change the fight to end malaria? So I can comment initially, and then I'll let Bill yeah. comment as well. I mean, I think that it's extremely exciting news. It adds a whole new dimension to to the toolkit for for fighting malaria. And you know, the as soon as you know, the, there is proven efficacy over a scale. I think that that becomes a really new tool for, for anyone who's engaged in malaria to begin to, to, to introduce that into their arsenal of, of how to respond to, to, to malaria um, on, a, on a global scale. I don't know if Bill has a different perspective or? No, I, I, I think the, the community health workers uh, with uh, support from Rotarians are going to be central uh, to the vaccination process. Uh, admittedly, the, the Oxford University study is only phase two, uh, right. but once they've completed phase three uh, and successfully as we hope it will be, um, I think there's a, a huge role for Rotarians uh, and, and the very concept of community health workers all over Africa to be the frontline uh, deliverers of, of the vaccine uh, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to Zambians and primarily the, we'll focus on the, on, unlike COVID where we focused on the older folks uh, with malaria, you will, we will focus on the five and unders. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm sure Martha would be just thrilled if, if there was this opportunity to lead a, po a, a rotary effort in Zambia uh, to vaccinate uh, uh, the young from, uh, from the disease. And thank you. We do have a question uh, related to community health workers, and I want to direct that one to Martha. Um, and also to this, uh, to the folks who posed this question, we just did a whole webinar on community health workers. So I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel and check that out. But the question is, how are community health workers supported? Martha, could you speak to that? Yes, please. Um, community health workers are volunteers for starters. And um, they, they what we do is when they come for training, like they are coming in on Sunday, we provide them with uh, some, a bit of allowances, a transport refund, as well as uh, provide them with enablers. These are um, a, st a starter pack that will include a bicycle, um, um, a, a, a cap, a shirt, um, a phone. And then uh, once in a while, when we call them for meetings and um, for any particular reason, 
we will give them a bit of allowance, but they are volunteers in this. Excellent. Uh, the next question uh, says that this club got some very powerful partners to join them. Will the future program of scale grants require Rotary clubs to bring in other funding partners to the table? If so, how should we wait to apply if we haven't already secured a partner? That's a great question. So because um, co-funding was not required in the first round, but was positively encouraged, but as you may have seen um, in the final applications, each of those had presented strong co-funding. Uh, it was less about the total dollar amount, but more that others believe in the vision and believe in the power of Rotary to address a problem and want to be a co-investor in addressing that problem with Rotarians. So uh, I would encourage people to secure that co-funding, secure those commitments, even if it's uh, in-kind commitments, uh, but that some level of co-funding or mobilization of funding and partners will be a requirement moving forward. And uh, Sarah, were large partnerships the original vision? Victor. Yeah, so I think that the original vision was to illustrate that Rotary could attract partners and could attract partners that were complementary to the work that Rotary wanted to do. Um, Rotarians are volunteers, and and unlike um, this group of Rotarians who have expertise in, in, in malaria eradication. Many, many Rotarians don't necessarily have expertise in the work that they're trying to do. So it becomes really critical for, for those partners, for Rotarians to partner with organizations that bring that expertise. Um, it also is critical, as, as Sarah pointed out, that there be um, other resources available to Rotarians so that when we talk about a $2 million program over five years, the scale of that program is still pretty small. If we can talk about a $6 million program over three years, the scale of that program obviously triples. And so to the extent that we encourage Rotarians to reach out for not only implementing partners, but resource partners becomes critical to the concept of, of how to move programs of scale forward in, in a space and time that, that will allow for, for fairly rapid growth in, in the program model. I have a question for Martha. How many community health workers does Zambia need to cover the country? How big an impact, impact will this project have on Zambia reaching that goal? Okay, the, the, the way the community health worker is structured is that uh, one community health worker is supposed to cater for 500 members of the population. So, uh, frankly speaking, we, we've not had uh, the census yet, but if you look at the 18 million uh, current uh, population for Zambia, we, we divide that by 500. And then we know how many community health workers. I think it's close to about the 6,000 uh, based on what. Um, Ministry of Health requires, but we still not even done half of what the, uh, the country currently has. So we still have a, a long way to go. Um, uh, last year, there were about 12,000. Uh, with our projects, uh, the three global grant projects we have and uh, the programs of scale, we will increase the number of community health workers in Zambia by about 33%. Uh, uh, so we are having a huge impact in, in terms of 4,000 community health workers covering 2 million people. I have a question for Sarah. Please comment on lessons learned from the first award and what will impact the evaluation process for the second Programs of Scale Award. Sure. Um, one of the lessons learned is we would have loved to have gone out and visited all of these projects. We're looking at ways to be nimble with still travel restrictions on the ground, but um, we had a really great, and when, when I talk about who assessed this, it was the Rod Rotary cadre of technical advisors who served as primary assessors. So they are the people who know Rotary projects, know Rotary clubs, know Rotary functioning, understand the areas of focus, understand Rotarians. So we had a mix of cadre and staff doing collective review of each of these projects. So that was a lesson of that collective review, which was fantastic to do. 
As for revising criteria moving forward beyond the co-funding, I don't see any major revisions, but what we hope to break out and make even more clear is what sustainability looks like and what future scale looks like, uh, as well as what are the core learning questions that the Rotarians have and what do they think they could share with other members in implementation. I think there's a real richness of experience that we want to really share with the membership on what's working and what's not working. So Rotarians around the world aren't repeating what's not working and they're mobilizing Rotary funds for what does work and what can work and learning how to localize it to work in their communities. Questions about uh, how can Rotary clubs be uh, involved from the US and be involved to help this effort? And then also questions about how small Rotary clubs, how, how is a program of scale achievable for a small Rotary club? I think Sarah has actually a really good example of how this program has actually spurned a whole new Rotary Club, which is an example of, of how um, Rotary Clubs can coalesce around an issue and form coalitions, if you will, of, of Rotary Clubs to become a more powerful unit. Um, when we looked at, at some of some of the other work that we were doing in a, in a different project in, in the Ivory Coast. One of the things that we looked to was the infrastructure of Polio Plus and the fact that Polio Plus infrastructure in the Cote d'Ivoire had every month brought every president of Rotary Clubs all over um, um, Cote d'Ivoire into Abidjan to meet on a, on a monthly basis. And it allowed for those clubs to have this kind of, of um, interaction. And if there were a project like this put forward in, in that environment, you'd be able to mobilize small clubs in a way that created one much larger coordinated effort. And I think that's the kind of synergy that we'd like to see um, happen with with smaller clubs that were really interested in doing this kind of work. Yeah, I think when we talk about the unique strengths of Rotarians, it's the drive and action um, and really using your volunteer hours for the best service to the your community and the world. But I think what uh, is part of the power of Rotary is that global network. And so by joining small clubs together, by bringing districts together by really working with uh, the clubs and district in the place where you want the project to occur. I mean, the power of Martha speaking on the local ownership of this program is just, it's, it's everything. So I think that's how the small clubs can think about um, not the small, but what's the power of the network that you belong to. Excellent. It's all about the coalition building. Um, so yeah. for Martha and Bill, question to you about how, what's the impact of COVID on the plan to equip and deploy uh, 2,500 community health workers? Um, like I earlier alluded to, the, for starters, the impact has been that uh, it has it's affected the budget in such that uh, a class has been reduced instead of 40 per class to 30. So meaning there'll be more training sessions. And then there's also a huge um, requirement uh, that is a huge budget line for providing the community health workers undergoing trainings with uh, protective equipment. That was um, uh, is a requirement. And um, basically, we we are working hand in hand with Ministry of uh, Health, and uh, we are getting the proper guidance and uh, observing the the COVID-19 uh, uh, rules and regulations. So we are. Yeah, we can leave it. And there's a there's a danger also, frankly, the, the community health worker program so far has had very little turnover. Uh, but we have had several deaths uh, in, in some of our project areas uh, due to COVID. And so we hope that is is fairly it's still fairly minimal, but that that is always a risk if if the pandemic is not uh, fully controlled in in um, in um, Wuchinga and central provinces. I know Martha and Bill can speak to this more broadly, but it's something that I would want invite everyone to think about in all of their programming is uh, 
COVID-19 has created so many resource constraints, especially on lower income and low middle income countries and the ministries of health are scrambling around that. And so that's also created a risk around the anti-malarial supply chain, getting uh, to the places in most need. And so when we ask uh, this team to think about the critical risks and any team to think about the critical risks, you have to think about the mitigation techniques and how to make sure it's sustainable. Um, so this team is working through how to ensure a sustainable supply chain for anti-malarials so that the community health workers are equipped with what they need to do. Thank you, Sarah, and that adaptation will be very important going forward. I'm gonna hand back over to Jenny now. Thank you, Ariel. Um, unfortunately, we are now at time, so I really wanna thank our speakers, Victor, Sarah, Bill, and Martha, and thank all of you who joined today to hear this webinar. Um, like Ariel said, we will have a recording of the webinar and a transcript available, and we would be more than happy to answer any remaining questions you might have. Um, you can certainly reach out to us, and uh, please visit our website. If you're interested in having a speaker come to your club, uh, to either virtually or in person, to present on malaria, we would be thrilled to do that. Um, and with that, I hope that you will all join us in the fight to create a malaria-free world. Thank you all very much.